When talking with our customers about their needs and wishes, one need was very clear. Make it easier to purchase and manage multiple software licenses and support plans. To address these needs, our development team has implemented a new web-based dashboard that completely reworks the customer ordering and renewal experience. In today's session, what we're gonna do is give you an introduction and tutorial on the basics. So let's get going. I'm Alan Percy, I'm the CMO for Telco Bridges uh, and the host for today's event. And joining us is Alan Baum. He's our lead technical writer at Telco Bridges. And Alan is a major contributor to the TB Wiki, authored most of the instructions on the customer dashboard, and has developed many of our instruction videos. And Alan, thanks for helping out today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Happy to be here. We are thrilled to have you here. This is the first time for you. So yes, that's it great. is. <laughs> I'm excited to have you. All right, so what to expect today? Um, like I said in the opening introduction, we're gonna dive right in uh, with some how-to procedures. Uh, we're gonna start with um, accessing the dashboard, uh, where to find that. If you haven't yet activated your account, what that procedure is like, uh, or if you're new and need to register and create a new account, how you do that. How would you purchase a Pro SBC license? We'll step through that. Uh, there'll be some information about organizing your licenses, you know, keeping them in order and keeping track of all of them. Uh, we'll talk about renewals and even how to adjust the uh, renewal date on your licenses. And then uh, if you want to add sessions or manipulate the number of sessions on, on an SBC, um, you can make those adjustments there too. And, and also too, we'll talk a little bit about Team Media and the service and support plans that go along with that. All right. Well, then we'll wrap up with some Q&A, but let's get started. Um, Alan, if you don't mind, would you uh, share your desktop and then we can uh, get going. I'll do that. So I'm gonna take you through, as Alan had said, a series of use cases uh, where we will go through some of the features of the Telco Bridges customer dashboard. So this is located at the URL you see on your screen at dashboard.telcobridges.com. And in the first uh, use case, this is the activation of your user account. So the storyline is you're an existing customer. You most likely received an email from Telco Bridges asking you to activate your customer account. And you have a link that uh, will bring you to this dashboard. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to click forgot password to reactivate the account. And you're presented with another screen. And just to show you, you, you do need to remember your password because if you enter something that's not quite your password, you'll be yeah, told it, that- it, uh, Quick correction, your account name. Yeah, your yeah, account, your account name. Yeah. That's right. And so uh, you'll be told that we don't recognize that uh, yeah. email. So now I'll enter in something that's uh, valid. And I'll click the request uh, reset password for this account. So an email will have been sent to that account to reactivate. And so you'll, you'll receive some type of email such as this. You select the URL or the link that will bring you to back to the dashboard and you enter in a new email, uh, sorry, a new password. And you select update password. So when you click login this time, you would enter your email, the new password, and you're brought to your existing um, setup. So in this case, this user has two licenses. But before I go into further information about how to interpret all of this, we'll go through the next use case, which is the registration or the creation of a new account. So I will log out. And in this case, you click create an account because it doesn't exist. 
and you're presented with a series of um, screens. So I will enter in another email. a password, a number, you click next. So you enter in your company name, the territory, the country. In this case, it's Canada, so the province. And this should be enough information. There, the last screen, you can say a little bit about yourself. So in this case, I'll enter consultant. And you can enter in more information, although it's not required for the registration of an account. And then you click register. Okay, this one seems to work. So I should have received a, a registration email. So I'll go to that account. And so this was the case of creating a new account. And in this one, I'm being told that the thank you for registering and you click on this link to complete the activation and it is now an active account. So if I enter in that information and I log in. So this view now shows me I have access, but I don't have any devices yet registered. So what I was just saying was, um, in this uh, creation of a new account, we see we have access uh, and there are no software licenses registered at the moment. So before I go into the creation of a license, I will show you a little bit more about the, the interface itself. And I'll show you from a view where there's a little bit more information. Okay, so let's just assume uh, you're part of a corporation that has uh, a lot of equipment and you see many licenses. So most of the data views, well, all of the data views show information in a similar fashion, always with uh, a header at the top um, and always in a data format. Right at the left, you have device type. So it could be free, pro SBC, pro SB plus, and so on. The product key that's used for the activation of the software license. This is the primary. The plus one is for a one plus one configuration if you had one. Uh, if you gave a name to your system, which is always a good thing to do, it could be the server name followed by where is this uh, system installed? Here we see the number of sessions, uh, and this can vary based on what you initially have access to or what you paid for. Here we see the expires column. So in this uh, situation, anything in a red triangle means it's expired, followed by an amber icon, which we should be able to see. And I do not, but <laughs> it's a, I guess it's changed. Circle, yeah. I guess I remember, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and next to that is, and, and if you don't see any icon, it means it hasn't yet expired. Um, next to this is the division. If your organization is large enough, you may have defined different divisions in the organization to which users are assigned. These are the users. And then you have some uh, 
check boxes just to indicate whether you have purchased 24 seven support in this case, whether the license is activated, more or less like that. Then uh, here you have T-Media. So if there are T-Media devices, you'll see them listed in this fashion. With similar uh, information, not as much. Here you have the serial number, the same idea of system and installation, the part type for the TMG, when the support expires, whether you have purchased 24-7, uh, if it has expired, in this case it has, followed by the PO number, and if there was an RMA. Uh, here you have the users. Uh, in this case, it would be if you had a large organization, maybe there are many users that are assigned to manage the licenses of your products. And this is a listing of the divisions. Also, you'll note that um, at the top of every one of these tables, so see here you see 403 elements. For T-Media, we see 151. Um, and any one of these columns allows you to change the alphanumeric order just by toggling it. However, you can also enter in any type of criteria and as you do, you'll notice that from 400 and so elements, it's now gone down to 220. Uh, another aspect of this filtering is you can select uh, some of these default filters to show me the licenses that are expiring at 60 days. And so this is what I was telling you about the amber icon. Um, and then to bring, so now you see you just have 29 elements uh, that are displayed. And to clear any one of these, you just click clear. So now we will go to uh, another use case, which is the creation of a new license. And for that, I will go to the empty data view. So another thing you'll notice is in any of these data views, there's a plus icon right here. So it's an active button. And this allows you to create new within this particular data view. If you're at users, you'll have a plus, but it means create a new user. Here it means create a new license. So by clicking that, I can enter information the owner in this case i'm going to choose the free sbc license so there's no charge here and by default it's one year expiring next year exactly it comes with 50 sessions there's no support and by selecting that you agree with the terms and conditions, it'll be displayed right here. So what you've done is you have asked for uh, a software license, and this is the key. And you'll also in your email receive um, let's see when I receive it. Okay, here we go, a new license email. And you are able to download a software image for the various platforms and whichever one pertains to you. And the software key is what you would use when you install the software to activate it. Going back to where we were. So now we will look at, um, oh, I, actually, I'd like to show you one more thing. Um, here, if you look under users, you'll see there is a single user, 
There's no division yet, but let's say you wanted to create a division for your company because it's rather large. You can do that. Um, You fill in the standard information. Okay, that doesn't seem to be working here today. So the state province that needs to be. Filled. Oh, I, I missed that field. Thanks, Alan. Doesn't matter how many times you go through these screens, you <laughs> always miss something. So now it became active. And it takes a few seconds to appear in the list. Yeah, maybe we're waiting for that. I think the intent for the division, obviously, is designed for large service providers, um, large enterprises who need a way of coordinating off their licenses so that one group can manage their own licenses, another group can manage theirs, and um, they can be centrally integrated when it comes to paying for, paying for bills and renewals and these kinds of things. So mm -hmm. um, it's really designed for large organizations, most most won't end up using that. Okay. Okay. So I think uh, I'll move on then to the modification of an existing license. This could be um, to extend uh, the date because it's expired, to add sessions, uh, to buy support. So rather than click the plus icon, because that's to add a, another license, you select the one that you want to modify. And you're brought immediately to the same screen you were at before. But what you can do here is you can change uh, what you want to, to buy. And so firstly, I would say we would go to Pro SBC because if you notice here, for a free SBC, there's 50 sessions. Now, if I want to go higher, by default, in the first purchase, I'll be given another 450 to a total of 500 sessions per year. And you see the current date to next year's date. You can simply add more years and the date will change. You can also buy 24 seven support. So you'll see that the price changes based on what I select. And once you're satisfied with what you have here, you click the checkbox. And this is going to bring you to the Telco Bridges store. And if you've done any online shopping, it's exactly what you would expect. So there's just some personal ID information followed by billing information for the purchase. And it's as simple as that. So when you would complete the payment, it'll then appear and list here as a pro SBC. But if, for example, uh, you didn't complete and you were wondering where that information was and what could you do, it's always going to be here in pending orders. So you could have one or you could have several that maybe you've set up but didn't purchase immediately. And by selecting it, you can go exactly back to where you were. And if you realize, well, I made a mistake, you can delete that as well. And so then to return back to where you were, you just select any one of these icons above to return to your data view. So, Alan, I believe that this mm -hmm. uh, completes the use cases that I was going to present. Yeah. Um, oh, that's great. It's great. And, and uh, hopefully that gives everyone a quick taste of it. And um, let's... Oh, let's by the way, here's what... that division that appeared. Oh, yeah. It took okay. a while. Yep. Okay, so I guess I'll stop sharing.
Great. I will take over. Thank and, you. And uh, we can handle the last couple of slides here. So let's do that. Okay, so we got a couple questions, so um, let's uh, dive into our Q&A here. Um, one question uh, was, you know, I've only got one license. Do I have to really go through all this rigmarole? Well, um, <laughs> yes. Uh, we, we've, what we did is we tried to make it so that if you have only one license, it's, it's relatively quick. I think we counted the number of clicks. Obviously, Alan was showing you some little side features and all, but uh, to, you know, if you have only one license to go in there and renew it, it's pretty quick and take you right to the store to have it renew. Um, our hope is, of course, down the road, you have multiple licenses. And matter of fact, most of our customers have three to five, and we have a small subset of customers that are hundreds. So we are trying to address all of that in uh, a single system is, of course, complicated. Uh, and I think the, the team has done a good job with that. Uh, Brian asked a question, said, what about um, EC2 and uh, AWS? Um, for now, what's going to happen when you, when you order a license or make adjustments on a license, uh, if, oh, specifically to a new license, um, we're going to ask you to reach out to support at Telco Bridges. Um, they manually have to share the uh, AWS image with your account anyhow. So um, just interim, in the interim, we'll have to do that. Uh, yes, that email that is sent to you with the links to download doesn't make any sense if you've got uh, AWS. And we just have to augment that a little bit with a mechanism for the AWS people. Uh, another question was, um, how do I import my active licenses? Well, fortunately, we'll do that for you. Matter of fact, um, if you do log in today with your um, the email address that your account is under, you will find all your licenses neatly tucked away there. And then, of course, the next question is, what if I don't remember what email addresses we used or how will I know? Um, we're going to send out an email. I think it's tomorrow morning. Uh, well, all the data has been loaded and uh, that will have in it, uh, it'll, that will go to all the email addresses that we have uh, on record with uh, our old license server and all the licenses that we transferred over to the new dashboard. Those will, um, those, each one of those email addresses will get an email with a reminder procedure about how to reactivate the account. Uh, and of course, that was through that forgot password process. Uh, and if you if you go to the dashboard and you enter what you think is your email address, and it says you know that we don't recognize this email address, that means either you used a different email address when you originally ordered the license, um, and you might want to kind of go through your records and see if you can find it. And again, if you need some help, uh, you know our support at telcobridges.com team can look it up if, if you remember the name or the company name and you can't remember the email address. So um, that seems to be the one thing people have forgotten what email address they use when they order their licenses and it causes quite a bit of difficulty. So let's talk also too about reminders and all that. The, uh, the new uh, dashboard will send out all the renewal reminders uh, and expiration warnings. Uh, and um, hopefully you'll click on the links in those warning emails to go back to the dashboard and renew your licenses. And one of the big benefits with the new process is you can see you can extend your licenses multiple years, and that should reduce the number of times you need to come visit the, the dashboard. Uh, we also hope that you, as your business grows, you add more and more licenses. You just try to keep them all organized under one email address, and we know I know of a couple of companies that um, have been using multiple email addresses, and, and we're going to have to work to get those all merged together under one email address. So um, a little bit of work to do there, but hopefully um, this does the trick. And uh, we're really excited about having now everything consolidated under you know, a single pane of glass that you can manage those licenses, both, both your uh, SPC licenses and also your T-Media support plans. So. All right, I don't see any other questions. And so, Alan, I'm just going to say thank you once again for all your help with this. this um, I appreciate all the work you've done and documented on the TB Wiki. and want to remind people that that's where to go if you're looking for a little more thorough step-by-step uh, -step instruction. 
Thank and you also, very much, Alan. Uh, want to remind everyone we'll be sending out a link uh, with an e we'll send out an email that has links to uh, this recording. And uh, if you feel uh, you've got somebody in your uh, network that would find it valuable, do feel free to forward this along. We're always happy to have uh, you know some people share this, and, and that's uh, why we do it. And of course, this will be on our YouTube channel sometime in the next day or two here. So thanks again, everyone. Appreciate all your support and listening in and I hope everyone has a good day. Thanks again.